Hey everybody, it's Steve with Real Progressives. I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, just because this is a subject that I know that many people have opinions on. And, uh, you know, opinions about colors, opinions about clothing, you know, opinions about music. Okay, I can buy that. That's not a big deal. But opinions about macroeconomic reality... That's not really something that an opinion really has a place in, okay? An opinion is something that, you know, you just feel, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually read an article that I think that everybody should read in general. But quite frankly, I don't think enough people actually will take the time to read. And so this article is, Banks Don't Lend Reserves. Who knew? MMT, that's who. And it's by Economist. L. Randall Ray, and it is an extremely important thing because this debunks the money multiplier myth that the Austrians and, uh, you know, all the people that buy into all the conspiracy bullshit about banks uh, taking on all the money, etc., uh, creating money out of thin air and the whole idea of we've got to democratize money and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and just read this to you and you guys can do some follow up. I'm not going to put a whole lot of opinion into this. I'm not going to put a whole lot of anything other than just the words of L. Randall Ray. Consider this a dramatic reading, okay? So, okay, so it took almost four decades, but finally the mainstream is waking up to the fact that banks do not lend out reserves except to one another in the Fed funds market. The whole deposit multiplier story that was taught in every American money and banking textbook is wrong. Just as an aside, the mistake was largely an American deal. British students got to use Charles Goodhart's text, which has always got it right, but generations of Americans, as well as foreigners who studied in America, were misled by our textbooks. So if our policymakers, who aren't in Washington, understood this, we would have not gotten quantitative easing, a.k.a. QE, or all the hyperinflation hyperventilating by those who fear that the trillions of dollars of excess reserves will get lent out and cause prices to go to the stratosphere. Hmm. Banks do not use reserves as the raw material for loan making. Rather, they lend out their own deposits, which are created by keystrokes. So, Post-Keynesians have always been saying this since a seminal piece by Basil Moore was published in 1979, and it is easy to find early precursors all the way back to the dawn of time, as I demonstrated in my 1990 book, Money and Credit in Capitalist Economies, by L. Randall Ray. Scrolling down. S&P's top economist, Paul Sheard, had written an excellent piece, Repeat After Me, Banks Cannot and Do Not Lend Out Reserves, published here, and he gives a Standard & Poor's uh, link. The whole thing is worth reading. Here's a snippet along with the citations he offered in support. The money multiplier view of credit creation. What is defunct idea here? that has such a grip on the world? Almost anyone who has taken an introductory course in economics or has consulted a textbook on the issue will have studied the money credit multiplier or fractional reserve system, banking, theory of credit creation. The storyline is essentially as follows. Under a fractional reserve banking system, the system in operation virtually everywhere in modern developed economies, banks have to hold a fraction of their deposits, a liability for them, as deposits at the central bank called reserves, an asset for them. But they can lend out the remainder, given these reserve requirements set by the central bank, and the public's preference for cash. There is a fixed money multiplier, the ratio of broad money to central bank reserves, such that a given amount of reserves multiplies into a much bigger amount of bank lending. 
the central bank supplies reserves to the banking system via open market operations or discount window lending. So when it increases reserves, given the fixed money multiplier, bank lending and deposits or the broader money supply should increase as well. But the money multiplier has not collapsed because it was never there in a meaningful sense to begin with. In other words, folks, it never existed. It's a lie. All right. All right. I'll say it again, but the money multiplier has not collapsed because it was never there in a meaningful sense to begin with. That, I'm sorry, I'm adding some editorial here. That means Ron Paul's a liar. That means that people talking about fractional reserve lending are either A, wrong, because that's what they said, everybody had the mistake, or two, they're flat out a liar. I think some people are gonna go with the liar approach because I think they have a bend on making us an austere nation. But that's another story. So how does QE work and why can't banks lend out reserves? And why is it that if the central bank so deems it, banks in aggregate have to park their excess reserves at the central bank so no one should be surprised if that is exactly what's happening? Think about it. So let's go on down here a little bit further. And there are two pieces to the puzzle. One that determines the amount of reserves on the central bank's balance sheet or in the banking system, as it is equivalently described. Two, how credit creation happens. That is how banks lend. Let's take them in turn. A key distinction to bear in mind, hinted at in the previous paragraph, is between individual banks and banks in aggregate. Neither individual banks nor banks as a whole can lend out reserves. They can't lend out reserves, folks, by lending them to other banks or by buying assets. But the banks in aggregate cannot do this. In such cases, the reserves that leave one bank's balance sheet just pop up on another. Remain on the central bank's balance sheet. They zero out, folks. There is no money multiplier. That makes people liars or incorrect. You take your pick which one you're going to attribute. Like I said, for the right wing, I'm going to call them liars. For the left wing, I'm going to call them uneducated. All right. So most importantly, banks cannot cause the amount of reserves at the central bank to fall by lending them out to customers. That possibility is not allowed for in the identity because bank lending does not enter into it. Assuming that the the public does not change its demand for cash, and the government does not make any net payments to the private sector. Two things that are both beyond the direct control of the banks and the central bank. Folks, they can't do it, in other words. Bank reserves have to remain parked at the central bank to express wonder that banks don't lend out their reserves or that they park them at the central bank is to fundamentally, fundamentally, misunderstand the balance sheet mechanics of credit creation and how QE works. That means they don't know what they're talking about, folks. That means they're ignorant. Be kind about it, be sweet about it, but in the end, the people talking about fractional reserve lending are not correct. They're not only not correct, but in many cases, I believe, because they don't like the government, they're flat out lying. That's my belief. I'm allowed to remember opinions. Everybody's got an opinion. I think they're lying. So, the last one, citations. Although the money multiplier view of central banking and credit creation is the dominant one, largely I would posit because it is pedagogical attractiveness, it makes it a dominant meme. Other schools of thought have long existed in economics and have come to the fore more recently in the guise of modern monetary theory. See, for instance, Win Godley and Mark Lavoie in 2007, and Wealth, Palgrave and Macmillan, L. Randall Ray, 1998, Understanding Modern Money, The Key to Full Employment and Price Stability, Edgar, Edgar, L. Randall Ray, 2012, Modern Monetary Theory, A Primer on Macroeconomic or Sovereign money, Monetary Systems, nicely put and cited, would have even been nicer to cite it in my 1990 book. Anyway, that's it in a nutshell. That's the article. And so, 
if you actually want to know what the hell you're talking about and you really want to make a change in this country as progressives, here's the thing. Jill Stein, the Green Party, cannot enact any of their plans without understanding modern monetary theory. It's literally impossible. Bernie Sanders, his entire plan was literally impossible without understanding modern monetary theory. Literally impossible, not partially impossible, not sort of impossible, 1000% impossible. Taxes do not fund spending. So if taxes don't fund spending, where does the money come from, folks? Come on, use your noodle. Where does the money come from? Banks don't lend reserves. Where does the money come from, folks? It comes from the federal government. It comes from Congress. It doesn't come from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is not the reason you and I are struggling. The Federal Reserve is merely taking actions from Congress. So when you ask, why are we struggling? Stop ending the Fed and let's talk about mending Congress.